Hi, I'm Joe Pereira from Boston College EMS and you're watching another Boston College EMS training video. In this training video, we're going to go over how to properly do vitals. We'll talk about blood pressure, pulse, respiration rate, and lung sounds. First, we'll discuss how to properly assess a patient's pulse. There are several locations where you can define a patient's pulse. Whenever assessing a pulse, no matter where it is, use two fingers and not your thumb. One of the most common locations used to find a patient's pulse is at the radius. To assess the radial pulse, place two fingers over their wrist on the thumb side. Using a watch with the second hand, count the beats per minute for 15 seconds. When you determine that number, multiply it by four to find out how many beats are in one minute. A pulse can also be assessed in other locations in the patient's body. One location is at the carotid artery here. This can be used when a patient is unconscious or unresponsive. There are several simple steps that you can take to adequately assess a patient's blood pressure. The first step is to put the BP cuff on. You can typically put it over a thin shirt or the patient's bare skin. Find the patient's artery and put the BP cuff on so that the label on the BP cuff that says artery is pointing down at it. Put the stethoscope over the artery, like so. Tighten the bolt and begin to squeeze. The needle should go past 180 millimeters of mercury. You might need to go further if the patient is hypertensive. Once you've done so, release the bulb. When you hear the first beat in the stethoscope, that is the systolic blood pressure. When you no longer hear the beat, where the needle is, is your diastolic blood pressure. Remove the BP cuff, and you have successfully determined a patient's blood pressure. To determine a patient's respiratory rate, you should count how many times their chest rises in 30 seconds and multiply by two to find out how many respirations are in one minute. One trick that you can use so that the patient is unaware that you are counting the respirations and it doesn't affect their breathing rate is to pretend to be assessing their pulse and put your hand on their chest like so. This way, you can feel their chest rise and you can get a more accurate count on their respirations in one minute. To adequately assess a patient's lung sounds, there are several fields in which you can listen. The first of these fields is right below the clavicle on the chest. This will help you assess the upper portion of the patient's lungs. Ask your patient to take a deep breath and listen closely. Make sure that you assess the lungs on both sides. To assess the middle field, put your stethoscope lower on the patient's chest and have them take a deep breath. Do so again on the other side. To assess the lower field of the patient's lungs, put the stethoscope on the patient's side here. And again on the other side. Also, be sure to listen to the patient's lung sounds on the back. You should start again at the upper field and be careful not to go over the patient's scapula so that you can listen clearly. Make sure you do it on the other side. To listen to the middle field, go lower on the patient's back, about here. Again, not over the scapula, and get on the other side. Finally, assess the lower field by going lower on the back, again, getting both sides. You can also put in additional fields if necessary, but that is how you primarily and accurately assess a patient's lung sounds.